what I want to show you now is I'm going to go back and select a different piece of artwork and show you more in more detail why your artwork has to be good. So I'm going to open a new design. There we go. And I'm going to go back to my picture view. And this time I'm going to get a picture that I got from a uh, free clip art picture from the internet. So I need to find that which is in my work in progress folder. And it's a JPEG. So you can open designs or load designs in bitmap format, JPEG format, PNG format, PCX, they're all listed here. So if you're not sure, just check in your drop down menu here to make sure that the picture you have is one of these formats. I'll select JPEG and that will bring up my other butterfly picture that I got from the internet. Open that one. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom right into that one. Now look at all these pixels. The software is going to see each of those as a different colour. And there's even a few grey ones scattered around here which are noise. There's no clear defined areas in the butterfly for the software to pick up as a block of colour. Now we can try and use the artwork preparation tool to improve this. If I click on the artwork preparation tool. And you can see the software has found 185 available colours. And it's tried to reduce them to three. And when it's done that, we've lost a lot of detail in the butterfly. It looks messy. It doesn't look very exciting at all. We can try increasing the um, number of colours we want to reduce it to. Let's try ten. And we get a bit better look, but it's still fuzzy. Um, Another alternative, we can cancel that. Another alternative is that we can go to our touch up picture tool. And that will allow us to open up um, a program that we have on our software. Now, if you don't have any artwork, artwork type programs loaded onto your computer, um, the, you will have paint because Windows always has paint available. If you have other um, Photoshop or PaintShop Pro or one of those other software programs, um, they'll be listed here automatically. But um, I'm just going to choose Paint because you'll all have that one. And so what happens then is the picture actually gets opened up in the Paint program. Now you need to understand how to use the Paint program. It has a Help button. I'm not going to teach you how in great detail now but I'm just going to show you a few things. First of all we need to zoom right into that. Um, this is a small image and we want to um, re, uh, we don't want to resize. I can't really there are very limited tools in this software um, I'm just, ah, there's the zoom tool, and we're going to custom zoom. So let's go up to 800% so that we can really see what we're doing. Okay, now we have um, tools here. We have fill with color. If I use the fill with color tool, I can select a color, for instance, orange, and you'll see the orange is my selected color here. I can go fill with color. Um, but it's only going to fill pixels that are already one colour. So here I have about six pixels all of a dark orange. If I click on those, well actually only two of them change colour. So you can see how tedious this can be, but eventually you could actually fill all your pixels with the same colour and create a solid block of orange and then you could go on to the other colors the brown and the, you could make the body a grayer brown um, you could make these a darker brown and this a lighter brown until you were happy with your final product 
Personally, I think that this is very tedious and I would prefer, if I, my image was this poor quality, to give up trying to automatically digitise it and just um, manually digitise it, which I intend to make some videos on soon. Now you can also use the paintbrush tool for bigger areas by selecting that. Of course I've still got my orange colour selected. Now I can actually paint over bigger areas. So that can be a bit quicker and then you can use your um, fill with colour to do the fine detail. With your paintbrush tool, um, sorry that's the pencil, we can use an airbrush tool. Um, down here we can choose how big an area we want to airbrush. That's far too big obviously. Edit, undo. Um, with our pencil tool is our only other tool. What have we got here? Oh, here's our brush tool. And we can choose the size of the brush stroke we want and whether we want it in squares or a circle shape. So if we choose the large square, for instance, that's going to fill an area that big with colour, which can speed up the process. And then you can go in and fine tune with your fill tool. Still, I would prefer to um, manually digitise a design like this. But should you be able to get the design to the level that you are happy with, the next thing you do is go to File, Update Design 1, and you can do that at various stages through your um, process several times. And then just go File, Exit and Return to Design 1. I'm not going to save this, but you can if you like. Um, save the actual image. Now if I bring the design back up here, I'll just zoom out. We can actually see the improvements I've made here by creating blocks of colour. So that they're your options with a, a not so good image. And then you can go on and do your artwork preparation. You still need to do that before you digitise. If you like this video and you would like to see more, um, subscribe to my video channel or go to my website and the context page contents page www.cudigitizing.com the contents page and send me a little message about the sort of things you'd like me to make videos on and I'll try to oblige. Thank you very much.